Welcome to the nationally syndicated Global Spiritual Revolution Radio, New York City, New York, with your host, Bishop Larry Gators. Welcome back to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio and Media Group here in New York City, New York. Please write now and tune in at WMCA.com, WMCA.com. You can also call in anywhere from around the world at 1-800-345-9622. Again, beloved, that is 1-800-345-9622. This is your host and moderator, Bishop Larry Gators, through the WMCA AM 570, FM 102.3 network through both the iHeart Media Group and the Salem Media Group here in New York City, New York. Now, back by popular demand, uh, we have a true historian, a true scholar. And I got to tell you, um, beloved New Yorkers in the world, um, the documentary in the book series from Hebrews to Negroes is pound for pound one of the most powerful and anointed documentaries I have ever witnessed. And we have back with this by popular demand, Brother Ronald Dalton Jr. Uh, thank you, man of God, for taking time out of your busy schedule to be back with us again here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Oh, no problem. No problem. Excellent. Glad to be back. It's an honor to have you. 1-800-345-9622. Again, beloved, uh, 1-800-345-9622. From Hebrews to Negroes, let's get to our first question, um, uh, Brother Dalton. Um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, have they reached out to you um, concerning the possible retraction of your work, both on Amazon and Barnes & Noble? Uh, well, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart, they have taken down the books from the shelves. Uh, they know, well, Barnes & Noble's notified me, and I, I don't think Target or Walmart did. And there's another another bookstore that in Canada that they used that they recently took it down because a customer said that she recently got the she ordered the book and was so happy that she got it before they took it down because she checked the next day and she said it was taken down. So they have taken it down from many different platforms that uh, the Jews and the ADL have power over, to, uh, you know, to do that. Um, now, Amazon, is it still up on Amazon and Barnes & Noble as far as their uh, well, websites? No, the only place it's on is Amazon. Barnes & Noble took it down. I don't know if you heard about this, um, um, Brother um, Ronald, and I thank God for you and for your courage. And uh, I, too, believe that uh, black America in the black diaspora, that we are the original Hebrews and we are the original Jews. Uh, We're not attacking anyone, but that is our spiritual understanding. Um, What is the distinction between uh, a Hebrew and a Jew? Because we've had so many, uh, actually uh, thousands of emails since um, two weeks ago, and people wanted me to ask you that specific question. So um, from the on start, what is the difference or the differentiation between a Hebrew and a Jew? Okay, a Hebrew is somebody that is a descendant of Abraham, the Hebrew. Um, so Abraham was the Hebrew, and he spoke Hebrew. Then technically, his children would be Hebrews too. So we could technically call Ishmael and his children and the sons of Keturah and the Edomites and the Israelites, all descendants of Abraham and the Hebrews because they would speak Hebrew. I mean, this is a known fact. The Herodians spoke Hebrew. The Ishmaelites, um, Abraham's son Ishmael, he was taught Hebrew. He didn't speak another dialect. He spoke the language of his father, Hebrew. But the distinction between an Israelite is that you are a descendant of Jacob's 12 sons. 
we just commonly use the word Hebrew Israelite for some reason uh, nowadays instead of just using the term Israelite. And a Jew is somebody that follows the religion of the Pharisees and the Sadducees or the, or the doctrines of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which back in those days um, you can convert to, to become a Jew. So if you were a Roman or a Greek, or even uh, Edomite, or the descendant of Edom or Esau, then you could follow the religion of, or the religious teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and you were then known as a Jew. So when Jesus walked the earth, the Pharisees and the Sadducees they had their own doctrines, and he called them he called the doc, the doctrines of men, and he said that every time you guys go around converting people to your doctrines, your religious teachings, that he said you go around land and sea, converting or proselyting people to your religious teachings and doctrines. And Jesus said every time you do that, you make that person that you converted twofold more of a child of hell than yourself. Now, why would Jesus say that if he was a follower of the doctrines of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, Pharisees which was the doctrines of men? Uh, he always commonly would say that they were, I mean, he would say that they're of their father, the devil. He would say that they were, uh, I mean, the generation of vipers, uh, snakes, and all types of terms. Even John the Baptist, you know, when they would come, John the Baptist will, call, will mention vipers and snakes. And I never understood why, why Jesus and John the Baptist were saying these things about the Pharisees and the Sadducees until I, until I, you know, got older and understood that these doctrines of men, that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were, teaching and, and upholding were not the teachings and doctrines of God or what Jesus was teaching. So he was against their teachings, and later on you will see that their teachings become uh, what was known today as the Talmud. So we have the the law, we have the oral law, the written law that was you know that was given from God to Moses, which we know as the, as the, the Torah, the Ten Commandments, and the Tanakh, the Old Testament. And then in addition to the, in, in addition to the Old Testament, the Jews have the Talmud, which is the collection of the of the teachings of the rabbis and the sages, aka the Pharisaical Sadducees teaching. So, back in those days, even until now, anybody that would follow the religion of the Israelites, incorporating also the teachings of teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Talmud, would be a convert or known as Jews. So, Jews can be people of many nations that all follow the same religion. That That is my definition of a, between a Jew and an Israelite. An Israelite is a birthright, and you cannot convert to the tribe of Simeon. You cannot convert to the tribe of Judah. You cannot convert to the tribe of Issachar or Benjamin or Levi. You cannot become a convert to become a high priest. It has to be a blood right. It has to be genetic. It has to be within your DNA and your ancestry, your lineage, and your pedigree. Uh, so that that's the difference between a Jew and an Israelite and a Hebrew. Now, to my understanding, man of God, um, according to the book of the Genesis that we call the genetics of God in chapter 12, where God calls Abram or Abram out of the Ur of the Chaldees, is it safe to say, um, Brother Ronald, that Abram's bloodline was Chaldean, but yet God called him to be Hebrew. I mean, is there a, a distinction between the bloodline of Abraham being a Chaldean coming out of the Ur of the Chaldees, um, and then he ends up dying as a Hebrew? Uh, break that down for us, that great distinction, uh, if you will. <clears throat> yeah, so so Shem had um, five sons, and he had Aram, he had Elam, he had a shore, he had a farkstad, and he had lud. Our farkstad had, you know, he had his children, and downstream of his children, you would have uh, Eber. And Eber would be the progenitor of what we will call today Torah, Abraham's father. And we have to understand that our farkstad territory was what many people will say would be a modern day Iraq or he would be the progenitor of the Sumerians, the Akkadians, and the Babylonians. 
And so the Sumerian cuneiform text is no different than the Akkadian cuneiform text or script, which is no different than the wedge cuneiform script of the Babylonian in Iraq. And so Ur is just a, a word for city. So Ur means city in, you know, that ancient language. Just like the word Ur means city in the Babylonian language, in the Dravidian Indian, the Dravidian Indians in South India, they also call the word Ur, U R, or sometimes U R U, Uru, Uru, the word for city. And so when you look at uh, many people that are from South India, Tamil Nadu, Malayalam, not Malayalam, but um, Kerala, Kerala is a Christian state in Southwest India, Tamil Nadu is is Southeast India, and you have Sri Lanka below. They they have dialects and oral histories that tie them to Mesopotamia and the descendants of our uh, So we know that the five, Shem's five sons are still alive to this day. They didn't die. They didn't go extinct. And so we have to understand that Abraham was just a, a part of the lineage of the older branch of the Shemites, which would have been our Farkstad, and then our Farkstad later on downstream had a, had a, a child or grandson or whatever named Eber. Eber is kind of like where we get the word Hebrew from, and then we see in our Bible that, you know, Abraham and Terah lived in Ur uh, or the land where the Chaldees also lived at. But that doesn't mean that, that Abraham was also a Chaldean because Chaldeans usually um, connect themselves to a branch out of Abraham's you know, kinfolks, because we know, you know, Laban and all these little guys, Nahor, they are all part of uh, Torah's uh, family tree. So they use that term because Chaldeans and Babylonians are kind of used um, interchangeably or sometimes they're seen as different people, but they still live within that, that territory today with Iraq or Babylon. Uh, but Abraham and Torah's ancestry, if you want to be technical, technical with it, it will go back to, uh, to be really technical with it and be correct, it will go back to our Farxad, and if we want to go down for, further from our Farxad, we will say they are descendants of Eber. Eber. What distinguishes us as the original Hebrews in the original Jews versus um, the Jewish people today. What what distinguishes um, between a Shemite versus a Semite from your um, biblical interpretation? Well, a Semite is not, uh, it's not a name of a person. Shem has a person. I don't know where they, where they drop the H and just have Sem. Right. Because... A, I don't see why they don't, they don't use Shemite, because if that's what they're trying to use, they didn't spell it correctly. But uh, Semite, to me, now they only use it as, ter- as a term to, you know, anything that's, that's deemed hatred or prejudice towards the Jews. Um, those that practice the religion of Judaism. But, you know, I mean, I, I think that these are word technicalities that we need to break down and understand what is the true Shemite. Who are the Shemites today? Is it only uh, referring to people that follow the religion of Judaism, or is it referring? Does it can it can it also be used by people that are true descendants of Shem? And the true descendants of Shem, uh, in terms of the Israelites, they mixed heavily uh, with the daughters of Ham, or people that we will call indigenous African. And so, by knowing this, knowing that Jacob's twelve sons intermixed heavily with the daughters of Egypt, the daughters of Canaan, the daughters of Cush. These are all indigenous Africans, black people. After two, three, four, five hundred, a thousand years, the Bible spans over a thousand years, at least you talk about the Israelites and, and the, the Exodus and the time of the judges and Samson, and then going into King Saul, going to King David, Solomon, and all the way down to you know Ezra and Nehemiah. This is over a thousand years of history. Uh, that the Israelites were intermarrying with the daughters of Canaan, the daughters of Egypt, and the daughters of Cush. So therefore, these Shemites that were descendants of Abraham are now infusing their bloodline with Hamites, uh, people that are indigenous to Africa. 
And so we all know that after four, five, six, seven hundred, even a thousand years of intermixing with women that are African, there is no way possible that you could come out with Moses or just, or just say that after the book of ne- ne- Ezra and Nehemiah that, that these Israelites were, were white then, and they were white back with Moses when they came out of Egypt. This is the lie that it seemed to be purported that the the Jews, when they celebrate the Passover, they're literally thinking that their people, Ashkenazi, the white European Jews, came out of Egypt with Moses, and they stay white until Ezra and Nehemiah, and that maybe perhaps they stay white until the fall of the Second Temple, and then when they went to Europe, they stay white. So some people, they say, they some, some Jews will say, well, we were black back in the day, and we turned white. You know, so there's all types of confusion, confusion in their story on how can they prove that they're the, the Israelites. But one of the things that's clear that in black people or Negroes or I say we Israelites, in our DNA, we do show forth evidence that we have we have mixture, genetic admixture with people today that would be the downstream descendants of the ancient Egyptians, the descendants of the ancient Canaanites, and the descendants of the ancient Cushites. So that is in our DNA. That's in our maternal DNA because our ancestors are mixed with the women of these nations. And the Bantu people in West Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, and South Africa, they do show evidence in their traditions and customs, which we lost, that are straight out of the Old Testament Bible, that they're, they've been keeping and passing down to their generations orally without, without a King James Bible in English or in their dialect or their language, and without a Torah scroll written in Hebrew, they have been practicing these so-called Torah, Torah customs for thousands of years because they are the true Israelites, and they are in sub-Saharan Africa. It's interesting, man of God. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this um, scholarship documentation, this book that, that was published uh, a few years ago by a Kanzarian Jewish scholar, a man by the name of Dr. Elyon Elyak. He wrote a book yeah. entitled uh, The Kinzarian Hypothesis, and he said, and I quote, that 90 to 95 percent of the Jewish people today, their bloodline is not interconnected back to Palestine or Israel. So they cannot call me an anti-Semite. I am just quoting uh, from a Jewish scholar. Uh, What say you about that? (laughs) Well, I did the same thing, too. I I did the same thing, too. They said, I'm an anti-Semitic. Yeah. You know, if you you use a a quote from Hitler, now you're part of the neo-Nazi group. If you use a quote from a Jewish person saying that he doesn't believe that we're the true Israelites, he believes we're Khazars, which Jewish people have said, then— because you use that Jewish man's quote that says the Jews are not the true Israelites and they are Khazars, now I'm I'm the anti Semitic person when the Jewish person is the one that said it. So but what he said what he said is correct. I mean the ancient Khazars, the, the Bulgars, the Bulgarian Empire, the old Bulgarian Empire was right next door to the Khazarian Empire. The Scythians there's a lot of names that, that were used <laughs> over the years in Central Asia in the Pontic Steppes, which is which is right where Ukraine is at in the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, a.k.a. the Sea of the Khazars. There's a lot of name changes that's been going on over the years, and people, people sometimes get confused on where these people come from because you might not hear the word Khazar back, say, for instance, around 100 A.D., but around 700, 800, 900 A.D., you're going you're gonna to know about the Khazars. And so the Khazars were a, a Turkic tribe. Some people said they're nomadic that were living in the Pontic steppes in that area known as Ukraine and also uh, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, mm-hmm. you know, so, southern Russia. You know, they lived there, and they lived amongst other Turkic-speaking tribes that were pagans. And eventually, at a, some point in time, the, the somebody said, you know, well, hey, well, you know, do you, we need to convert to a religion because, you know, these pagan religions is not in right now. We need to either be Christians or be Muslims or be uh, uh, followers of Judaism. And their king decided that we're going to convert to Judaism. This could be the national religion of the land. It's like Christianity is the national religion of America. 
and Christianity was made a national religion of Russia. You know, uh, so, you know, we have the Eastern Orthodox Church. So, yeah, so the Khazars, they, they, they wanted to be followers of Judaism. So they converted to Judaism, and overnight, their people then became known as Jews. Exactly. And so the population bust is the reason why the majority of modern Jewry today is consisted of Ashkenazi Jews right. who are descendants of the Khazars. Right. And to our listeners and to many of our uh, global spiritual revolution partners and also a lot of our global spiritual revolution media group student pastors who are also watching live uh, on our YouTube um, page, which is youtube.com um, for a slash C for a slash global spiritual revolution radio media group. And all of you can listen to us live right now, anywhere for, throughout the world, either on your laptop, desktop, um, Chrome tablet, Apple tablet, iPhone, or um, Android at www.wmca.com. That is www.wmca.com. And once you go on to our global website, wmca.com, then just click Listen Live. We have um, Brother Ronald Dalton Jr. Um, from Hebrew to Negroes. Um, another question. I don't know if you've heard of this organization, um, the Creative Community of Peace. They're out of Los Angeles. And it's to my understanding, man of God, that 200 of the most powerful Jewish entertainers, music moguls, um, those of the head of Warner Brothers and MGM, they wrote a petition, about 200 names, um, through the Creative Community of Peace, which is connected to another organization called Stand With Us. Now, New Yorkers and to the world, what the bishop is about ready to say, I am not let me say this again, I am not, and allow me to say it for a third time, I am not slandering um, the ADL or B'nai B'rith. I am not attacking the Jewish people. Our responsibility tonight is to get to um, the see the origination of truth. So the community, creative community of peace, um, connected with staying with us in many of the um, it, its members, both through the com, uh, creative community of peace and stand with us, are connected to Israeli Mossad. And I find it interesting, Brother uh, Dalton, that we don't hear any backlash from the ADL or from B'nai B'rith or through the creative community of peace. So stand with us concerning the one of the most evil and diabolical documents in history, Mein Kampf, and any one of our listeners can just go on Amazon.com for a slash books and just type in Mein Kampf and um, a Jewish historian uh, by the name of Dr. Manin, he has transliterated that document. And he was connected to Israeli Mossad. Wait a minute. But guess where the prophets of the sale of the Jewish interpretation of Mein Kampf is going to, to Jewish organizations um, and charities. But but there's no backlash against that. Uh, what say you, man, got about that? It, this is mind-blowing. It, uh, it is mind-blowing. There's, there's actually books on Amazon that people have shared with me that they've read that they say, Ron, these books on this page by Jewish rabbis, uh, they describe black people as monkeys, as oh beasts, my God. animals, subhuman, uh, wow. non-thinking, you know, just like <laughs> beasts. And I'm like, well, really? And I'm like, yeah, they, they, I went to Amazon, it's right there. Mm, mm, and we mm. have to understand that there's books on Amazon that, that don't shed a positive light on black people and how they appeared us to be in terms of the the evolutionary ladder, like they see, like we're just, we're like we're not too far from a monkey or an ape, and these books are hurtful. Uh, and and you know, of course, we don't like these books because these books are are depicting us in in, the, in a manner that we don't see ourselves as. But these books, like you said, 
including Mein Kampf and other books that are considered uh, anti anti Semitic or anti black or anti whatever. These books are on Amazon right now. There's, I mean, there's books that are anti Jesus. I mean, the Talmud, the Talmud yes. has a lot of passages that are anti Jesus or anti Christian. So why aren't the Christians or those that are Jews for Jesus, why aren't they issuing a backlash or issuing a petition to take down these books? I you had. Know, that, that's, I yeah. mean, this, this is the thing. This is, you just blew my mind, man, God, because um, I have many Messianic Jewish scholar friends who have told me through their mouth that in both the uh, Babylonian Talmud and the Palestinian Talmud, that they call the uh, the Jerusalemite Talmud, when in actuality, that specific Talmud was not written in Jerusalem, another topic for another day, that not only does the Talmud defame Christ, but there are multiple, and this doesn't come from Bishop. So don't call my office, New Yorkers, and tell him and call him me an NC Semite. These are Jewish scholars uh, that Brother Ronald Dalton and I are quoting. And according to both the Babylonian Talmud uh, and the Palestinian Talmud, that they promote child marriage. I, it, it's right there. But if I bring it up, I'm called an anti Semite. And so that that has to change. Man of God, one eight hundred three four five nine six two two, one eight hundred three four five nine six two two, one eight hundred three four five nine six two two. 345 two. Many of these great scholars, um, uh, Dr. Robert A. Rockaway, I'm sure you've heard of him, uh, Professor Emeritus at the world renowned Tel Aviv University. Um, one of his powerful documents called, uh, but he loved his mother. He said, and I quote, that the uh, system of prohibition, illegal bootlegging, was done by the Jewish mafia. Murder incorporated by the Jewish mafia. These are from Jewish scholars. This is nothing from the nation of Islam. It's nothing from what Bishop wrote or Brother Ronald Dalton. And Dr. Robert A. Rockaway also said that many of the Kinsarian uh, mafia heads control to this day the financial structure of the five families here in New York City. When I mean the five families, the five Italian families. Um, What say you about that? Again, this is coming from Jewish scholars. Uh, What say you, man of God? Well, that's, I mean, that's everything is is true and correct. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's an agenda to, censor anything that goes against the you know the narrative that they're pushing uh even wikipedia you know when when oh yes when i was on when they labeled me an anti-semite then my then wikipedia popped up ronald dalton jr and hebrew negroes and i read it and i said wow that this who, who did this who put right. it together I said, because they labeled me basically as a as a terrorist as a bigot as wow. an anti-semite anti-semitic and me, myself, and others tried to edit and rechange the Wikipedia website, and we were told that we could not do so. And they said if we kept attempting to do so, that we would have our accounts locked and all this other stuff. And I've told people this on a on, on Clubhouse, and then a guy sent me a video of Jews saying how they control Wikipedia and how they because Wikipedia is, is the most used the most used site for getting information. Right. So you go to Google, you Google something, and Wikipedia pops up. So if they can control Wikipedia and the things that Wikipedia states, then, you know, you're kind of like, you know, you, you're just on a one-track road. Like, you're just going to go exactly where they tell you to go. And so this is this is the thing, you know, when they control the movies and they control what kind of books are on the shelves and Barnes and & Nobles and Amazon, then they control what you're reading and what you're seeing. This, this is the reason why... We are going to have another slave movie with Will Smith at the end of the year called Emancipation. More slave movies every year. Why don't we have Holocaust movies twice a year, every year, showing the the atrocities and the things that they went through that they don't want to keep looking at? But we have to keep looking at slave movies every year that's being distributed <laughs> by companies that are that are that are 
that are ran and, and sometimes CEO, founder, president is people of Jewish descent. You can Google it and see. <laughs> so this is this is obviously a, a, a big issue that nobody's talking about, and it continues to, it continues to go on, and nobody says anything about it. Nobody does anything about it. Well, the, the uh, Emancipation Proclamation it never said um, the um, the Proclamation of Liberation. It's called the Emancipation. In other words. It, the term, the terminology em- emancipation simply means you're no longer on the physical plantation, but psychologically, politically, and emotionally, you're still a controlled asset of the state. And in, for all of our listeners, not just here in New York City, but around the world, the 13th Amendment was never ratified. Right. Two years after the emancipation, <laughs> that's it. Two years after the emancipation proclamation. Okay, it's not the uh, liberation of proclamation because the system does not want not just black. It's not about black anymore. It, it's this global crab barrel system. So, two years later, after the emancipation proclamation in eighteen sixty three, in eighteen sixty five, the Thirteenth Amendment was never ratified, which means technically. Black America is still on the plantation. But if you mm-hmm. try to, uh, matter of fact, on, on the way here tonight, man of God, and uh, there was an, I'm not going to say her name, but an African-American woman, she had said on YouTube, but I just watched the Hebrews to Negroes documentary so you wouldn't have to. So what they do, the system chooses our people to trash us. And that, has yeah. to change. 1-800-345-9622. 1-800-345-9622. And as a quick side note, those 200 names on the Creative Community of Peace petition that was sent to Amazon in Barnes & Noble, at one time or another, these individuals had said the N-word. Either wow. within a television show, a movie, um, or during the interview, all 200 names. Why won't the creative community of peace come out of the shadows and show not just black America, but the world, who are these names? And exactly. come and come to the black community and speak to us. Don't hide in the shadows. Don't throw a rock and hide. OK, and call us and see, that's the thing that brings a righteous indignation all. And, and I got it. I got something to confess, man of God, that out of my staff here in New York City, we got a small staff of about 25 people. Five of them are Jewish. And they were the ones that found out this information on the 200 names that one time or another, whether they were a movie mogul. Okay, a music mogul, an actor or an actress said the N word. But this but the crack news network is not going to say anything about that. What say you about that, man of God? Yeah, when I when I saw that, I, I when I saw the petition, I, I just was like, Wow. I said It's crazy. Look, it's got so, so scared and so fearful that yes. every day every day when they go to sleep, when they wake up, they can't rest until Amazon Movie down. It's, that's how much they don't want you to read this book that's subtitled Wake Up Black America. The movie, the, the book is subtitled Wake Up Black America, and they're like, no, <laughs> we don't want Black America to wake up. Take this book down. And now, oh. immediately. Like, we, like, and, 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 and the sad thing is that they have, they, have, they have been successful in all the platforms except for Amazon. Isn't and that interesting? people are wondering why Amazon is not budging right now. Um, you know, I think Jeff Bezos, he's not Jewish because I looked him up, and I don't think he was Jewish. I think he was born in New Mexico or something like that. But, right. but yeah, so I, don't, I mean, you know, it, it, it baffles me, but, you know, they're, they're still pushing. They're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. And black people, we're, we're not, at least the world is not saying, well, what about Mein Kampf? What about this book and that book that's anti-black, it's anti-Christian, it's anti-this, anti-that? Why not Why not take these books down? See, you know, that's hate, yeah. is, is it hate speech? Because hate because the thing is, they're saying is that it's hate speech, and hate speech can be towards somebody's race, their religion, their sex, their ethnicity. It's a whole host of things. 
So, I mean, we could see, we could say this is a hate speech because I'm the Christian. I'm a Christian, and, and this book says that Christ is boiling in hot feces, you know, or right. you can do this and you can do this, or blacks are monkeys. Like, this is on this is on Amazon right now. So this is anti-black saying that this, this book is saying that blacks are monkeys and animals and beasts. So why not petition to take these books down? And it's still on Amazon and right now. Wow. This is mind-blowing, brother, Amazon man right. of God. Wow. I mean, yep. this is mind-blowing. And uh, a comedian by the name of Sarah Silverman has constantly said the N-word. Where, where's the ADL? Where's it? I, I, wait a minute. She did a a um, a stand up routine a few years ago uh, about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. defaming Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Where's ESPN? Where's Stephen mm-hmm. A. Smith? Mm-hmm. Where is Shannon Sharp? Where? Is Charles Barkley, Kenny the Jet Smith, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal, who has yeah. blasted the documentary, hasn't seen it, but blasted it, but yet the the documentary is playing at his movie theaters, Cineplex Twelve. Yeah. <laughs> this is hypocrisy. Yeah, yeah I was there. I this, was there. I, I, you know, you, I, I, was, yeah. I was there. We do, the crazy thing is that I tried to screen screen the movie at the SBA theater in New York city, downtown New York city. And, and during that time, uh, hidden colors, the movie part five, uh, screen like a month or two prior, prior to me going to the SBA theater. Right. And the SBA theater said, Oh yeah, we just had hidden colors here. It was a big turnout. And they said, Mr. Dalton, uh, what day would you like to show your movie <laughs> and what time? And I, and I told them, they said, okay, it's going to be 4,000, 4,000 some dollars. I said, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to make payment. The lady said, <laughs> Okay, let me just run it, run it by corporate, and I'll get back with you. You can make payment today, and we can lock you in for the date for the screening and everything. She had the name of the movie and all that stuff. She, she, the, 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 the owner or the corporate guy emailed me back and said, unfortunately, I'm sorry, sir. After looking at your, uh, your movie, your trailer, and look at the website, unfortunately, we cannot allow you to show your movie here. So movie theaters have, have actually uh, said, no, Mr. Dalton, you cannot show your movie here, but Shaq's Theater, uh, they they knew the name of the, they knew the name of the movie and it was advertised well in advance and and it played in his theater. I was there in Newark, New Jersey. This is so, hypocrisy. Yeah. yeah, I mean we we got about three minutes left. One eight hundred eight three four five nine six two two. Again, beloved, one eight hundred three four five nine six two two. This is your host and moderator tonight, Bishop Larry Gators, through Global Spiritual Revolution Radio here in the Big Apple, New York City, New York. Um, from the creator of, of Hebrews to Negroes. Um, one more question, um, Brother Dalton, and we would love to have you back because I know you're you are on a very tight schedule. You're a man that's in great demand, and rightfully so. Um, is it true that black entertainers get rewarded for buffoonery in coonery? It seems like um, black actors and actresses and entertainers they get. Um, reward it for this type of attitude what say you quickly before we close out tonight I, I think they do I think that if they side with the uh you know like Shannon Sharp I listen to him I just shook my head like I can't believe he's saying these things and, and like you said all the guys you mentioned on ESPN I, I'm just like you know either they're either they're going to get an extra bonus right, brother. paycheck yes we got to we got to cut it loose. Uh, we love you, brother. We see you next time here on Global the Spiritual Revolution. The broadcast is sponsored by Larry Gator's DBA Global Spiritual Revolution. If you are sixty five or older, you know this. Watching your hard earned dollars fly out the window on health care costs is frustrating. Well, here's something that can really help, and it's worth taking a minute to look into. MediShare sixty five plus. MediShare is a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills. 
And it really is a community too. People encourage and pray for each other. Well, MediShare 65 Plus is a low cost option for those with Medicare Parts A and B, and it fills in the gaps where Medicare stops. It's a great way to fight inflation too. You can lock in one low monthly price for up to 10 years. And it's easy. You can use any Medicare approved doctor or get 24 7 telehealth access from the comfort of your home. Very worth looking into during Medicare open enrollment, which ends December 7th. If you join right now, your second month share will be free. So don't miss this chance. Call 833 SHARE24. That's 833 S H A R E 24. 833 SHARE24.